All right, well, we are on our way. It is the uh, last five days of our time here in Idaho, and uh, Jesse got it done. First elk with the bow, first elk, and now we are going out to see if I can fill an elk tag. So, John's behind us in his truck. Donnie and I are here. We've got the motorcycles. We are heading to fill up with gas, and we are going to seek out an Idaho elk. Get it done fill last tag we have for archery season and some other fun stuff coming up here after this hunt but right now we are focused on archery elk in idaho We got a bull to answer down the canyon a couple miles. It's in a pretty nasty spot, but we just wanted to hit a couple of these obvious little ridges that are close to the road. It's Monday, so they've probably been hammered over the weekend, but I don't want to drive by an elk to hike in three miles to an elk, so we're just checking off a couple easy spots and uh, taking inventory right now. Nothing here, we got one more place to check. The bull that bugled down there is uh, right exactly where I scouted back in early August and I have a trail camera. It sounds like right where he was bugling from. So hopefully got some pictures of him. We've got two trail cameras up here. We're gonna go up and bugle up there and then drop in and check those cameras. And if we don't get anything going, we'll come back and make a day hunt here out of that one. It's probably three and a half miles to get into where that bull's at. By the time we go around, come up the ridge to get the wind right, it's, I think, 2,200 vertical feet straight up to where he's bugling at right now. So It's about 36 degrees out up at the top. There's just a little skiff of snow from the rain that came through last night. Well, if it snowed, then it was snow that came through last night. Down in the valley where we were, it was rain. <laughs> it turned to snow up here. So that's the game plan for today. Um, we've got the motorcycles. There's a basin back in. We can ride the motorcycles back into about five miles and hunt that this afternoon if we can't make it up to where that bull's at or he quits bugling. But he's been there the last three years and it's a dig to get in there, which is why he's sitting up on top bugling loud and proud. So one more place to check off and then we will be hunting an elk somewhere. Could be good or bad, I guess. The wind's going up, so if we can get down the canyon and back up on top of the hill and be above him, that's good. But he didn't bugle this time. He bugled right at daylight here. My guess is he's over the top on the ridge where he beds, so. Put on the gaiters and lace up the boots. Go find him. Well, it is a little after 9 a.m. We located a bull at daylight. We were really hoping to find another bull that wasn't as far away and as steep up, but we're at 5,340 feet elevation right now. And the north face where we anticipate the bull is bedding is at 7,850. So about 2,500 vertical feet to climb. The good news is we have about a mile and a half to accomplish it. So that's really not that steep of a grade. It's 45 degree or so. Yeah. So we're gonna head in. We should be able to get up there two hours, hour and a half, two hours, which would be perfect. He'll be settled down in his bedding area. Plan on going around the uh, east side of the mountain, anticipating he's on the northwest side bedding. And 
drop in and crash his party. last night it's all political stuff all nonsense but there's a headline man cut in half at sawmill and I bid on it guys working at a sawmill running a log through one of those great big blades sucked him into it cut his entire left side off thought there's no way somebody could live through that but after they examined him, the doctor said he'd be all right. Get it? All right. Left side cut off. John's laughing. Huh? It took you a while. His right side was left. I was busy watching audio levels. We have to tell a dad joke every time we get out of breath and stop on this climb. So There's going to be a lot of them. This is where they grow the Duck Commander goatees. All right. We can only go up from here, right? I just hope that what we heard wasn't a bugleberry. The bugleberries in this part, when they get ripe in late September, they actually make a sound that sounds just like an elk bugle. We walked through a patch of them back there. That's why Mountain Ops was so adamant about harvesting all of them. Make sure we weren't confused about hearing bugles. But they work. We drank some bugleberry this morning and we heard a bugle. That means it works, right? What's really cool is I had the forethought to reserve 30 tubs of bugleberry ignite and the entire inventory of Mountain Ops bugleberry ignite sold out in six days. So I still have 30 tubs of it. What are you going to do with them? I don't know. I just save them for a day when I'm really tired. <laughs> 30 days worth. Or just take it all in one day. We could give some away. <laughs> sure that would work. Make somebody happy. 30 somebodies. <laughs> We're going to give away 30 at once. Maybe one, just one a day. One person gets 30 tubs. <laughs> It'd be like a one month supply. We do have some cool giveaways, so despite our lack of elk action so far this morning, we got you hanging on, don't we? We're going to give away stuff. Can't get into elk, but we'll hook them with some free stuff. Hang tight. Leave a comment below. While you're leaving a comment, we're going to walk up the hill and find an elk or a bugleberry. We are about halfway. Are we halfway up the mountain? Yeah. Halfway up the mountain, and it's lunchtime. I don't know what time it is, but my stomach says it's lunchtime. So we get asked a lot what we carry for food for a day 
on this kind of a hunt. So I do a gallon Ziploc bag for each day and put my food in there. Uh, I've got backcountry breakfast bars that I'll eat in the morning, so it's missing, but it's usually right there in that spot. And then for dinner, we've got like a peak refuel uh, meal that we'll have when we get back down to the trailhead. But throughout the day, I need lots of energy and climbing a hill. We're, we're literally climbing what 2,700 feet in elevation today to get up to the top. And doing that for six straight days taps your resources. So we're going through a lot of calories. I don't have the total number of calories. I can get that and add it all up. I know last year there were a couple days we were well over 4,000 um, and still hungry sometimes. So I've just got, I'll show you what I've got. I've got a cliff bar. I've got three candy bars. These are my uh, motivation. So I only eat them when I get really tired and I need something to mentally motivate me. I've got a Nature Valley peanut granola bar. I've got Justin's peanut butter and honey. These are really awesome. These alone have 210 calories and they weigh one ounce. So awesome little packet of energy. A couple of uh, honey stinger waffles. I've got lemon flavor, strawberry flavor. I also really like the cinnamon and the vanilla flavor. This is my main meal, and these Green Belly meals to go, this has 645 calories in it. It weighs five and a half ounces, so a lot of punch right there. Uh, I carry some dried fruit. I've got pineapple, mango, and apricot in there, and I've got some custom trail mix. So it's got sliced almonds, uh, cranberry, strawberry, blueberry, and some white chocolate chips so that's my source of energy for uh in between when we leave, when we leave the trailhead in the morning to when we get back at night again those backcountry breakfast bars i think they're are they 300 calories something like that 330 uh they're they taste like you're eating a horse food pellet or something but they aren't terrible but they're not the most delicious but when I eat one of those in the morning, I don't get hungry again until lunchtime. If I have a Pop-Tart or something like that, I'm hungry within an hour. So definitely a good, good source of nutrition for breakfast. And then Peak, we just, last year we started using the Peak, uh, hydrated, dehydrated meals. They're awesome. Great source of calories. They taste really good. They've got good stuff in them. So that's a rundown of, of what I eat in a typical day. Uh, I just started carrying a camel's back or a hydration bladder, I guess. It's not an official camel back, but a uh, water bladder, three liter water bladder, which you can ask these guys. I used to drink two 16 ounce bottles of water at most a day and uh, realized I need more water. So I carry three liters of water and uh, going up a hill like this, I'm drinking as much as I can just so I don't have to pack it all to the top. But let's break down. Uh, that's a strategy for success and if you want to be successful you got to get to the top of the mountain so that's today's strategy for success that's sponsored by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation sometimes we don't think about nutrition when we're thinking about elk hunting we're thinking strategy we're thinking thermals we're thinking all the other things go into it but making sure you're keeping on top of nutrition for six or seven days going hard like this will probably be it I'd say 70 or 80 miles on foot by uh, Saturday. Today's Monday, so gotta make sure we have enough energy at the end of the week. So that's, that's how we do it. up 
on the edge of this flat here, call down into it, and then skirt around the right side there, and get up on top and then drop over. Hopefully find that bull that was bugling this morning. How far have we gone? 2.68 miles. Got at least two more to go. Five miles one way just to get to a bull that we heard bugling from the road. So road hunting is not always easy.
just, it's not like that. I mean, it's so far away. Anything from Mid Mountain up, we'd have to be able to hear. A little clearer.
My twenty and my thirty. With this thing being ten or eleven yards back, I caught the edge of my broadhead just so slightly. Very disappointing, very discouraging to hike that far and that hard and get that close. And then, I mean, everything was right. The wind was so perfect all day, just a strong uphill. We pushed and pushed and pushed him. We finally got him on the back of a ridge where we could get close. Almost messed up big time and bumped his cow and did the whole bull coming in and stealing off a cow and screamed and man he came charging up the hill but archery bow hunting is a game of inches fractions, fractions of inches my blade on my broadhead didn't make an indention in that rotten piece of wood more than a sixteenth of an inch if that but it was enough to Hit it and deflect behind him. I don't even, this is embarrassing, frustrating, exhilarating <laughs> to be that close. My heart rate was elevated for an hour, knowing he was a big bull, knowing he was going to step out any second. 
literally the second I shot, I heard it hit that stump and I didn't see that. I mean, the stump was there. I'm not saying I didn't see it. I just didn't see it in my shot window. But it was 10 or 12 yards closer to me. I thought it was right close to the bull, so I thought the arrow would just go right over the top of it, no problem. But it did not. And I am in a slump. I've got a streak. This is not a good streak. This whole educating through failure is getting very old. Ready to entertain. We're done educating. Let's yeah. just entertain. It's time to break the streak. <laughs> it's not like I'm forcing shots or taking bad shots. It's just those smallest little calculations that just cost you. <laughs> Fractions. Had that arrow been a 30, well, we'll say a 16th. A 16th of an inch to the left. We'd be packing an elk right now. Have a funny dad joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yesterday. What's today? Monday? I guess it was Friday. I met the garbage man out by the curb. He was new on the job and I was curious. I asked him if there was like any formal training that they go through when they get hired, and he said, we just pick it up as we go. <sighs> Your jokes are as bad as my shooting. <laughs> the kids really like it. <laughs> no excuses. It's on me. I shot the arrow. I thought it was clear. It wasn't. I know we won't be climbing 2,700 feet tomorrow. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't know where we're gonna find another elk like that. Yeah. That's the bad thing about hunting in remote and rugged country. You just can't find any that's close to the road and not steep. That's literally the only bull that was on this hillside. We didn't see another single track all day that was fresh. That was the only sign we saw was right when we got into him. He'd been living up there. He had a big, multiple bedrooms up there. <laughs> He's there for a reason. He's big for a reason. Because yeah. I missed him. <laughs> he would have been done growing today. All right. Enough pity party. Finish the rest of this downhill and hit the road. A couple of miles on the road. Uh, we'll be back. I don't want to hear about it. So close. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not going to dwell on the negative any longer. It's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Although at the time I didn't feel I had a whole lot to be thankful for after that whole incident, but I do. Yeah. It was an incredible day of elk hunting and just didn't end quite like no. I would want it to end. No. It's not not even, even, yeah, that's... I can't even make a small enough you saw it. That bull, we absolutely worked our tails off for that bull. It started this summer. I scouted that area this summer and I took a picture from on top and sent it to John and Donnie and said, this is where we're hunting this fall. Only problem is it's 3000 vertical feet to the yeah. top. And I got up in there this summer, just absolute beautiful meadow area, the elk were in, I bumped elk. I, I, Backing up a little bit, e-scouting, I found this area. I put a pin on Onyx Maps where I wanted to scout. There were elk literally at the pin when I went in there scouting. 
And so I put the trail camera there. And it took, how long did it take us? Five hours? At least five hours to get up top. Five hours to get up there. And we're day hunting. We aren't bivy hunting, we're day hunting. Yeah. So we hike up five hours just to get the wind right. There is no way to get up to where this bull beds unless you go around the back, over the top, and drop down on him. Because in the morning, the wind's going down, and he's literally in this patch of alders that's impossible to get through without yeah. making noise. And then as the thermals change, he's at the top bench there. Everything from below him's coming up, and you have to come in from above him. And the only way to get in above him is to go around the mountain and over. So yeah. that's what we did. And, you know, we, we put all of our eggs in that one basket. That one bowl was what we were going to hunt. We knew right when we were going to be on them. We knew when we needed to start bugling. We were in the spot, let out our bugle. There he was, exactly <laughs> where we thought that yeah. he would be. Like, let's walk up to this rock and bugle off here, and he should answer right down there. He answered. Yeah. We dropped down the hill, and it's... A, video never shows how steep something is. It's as steep as anything I've ever climbed. It's, yeah. it's not vertical, but it's... We'll call it vertical. <laughs> so we made that huge hike, all this effort to get in there. Uh, the hike in there to set up the trail camera. On the way, we stopped at the meadow, got the trail camera. There were a ton of elk on it, but not... Not a herd bull. No. And so that kind of had me a little concerned, but I knew that with that many cows, there had to be a herd bull in there. And he bugled. And there's just, there's something about a big bull when they bugle. And this bull bugled and we knew he was a big bull. Yep. So, and that's why he's in that spot. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's still alive and still big. Well, it's not the only reason he's still alive because somebody missed him. But yeah. we, uh, Donnie dropped down called his brains out, did everything he could possibly do to bring an elk in, and that bull came, he should have come farther. He should have come into our setup because Donnie was back. The bull had to come another 100 yards to even get to where he could see Donnie. He was 80 yards from us and hung up there and started going back. And so John and I just kept moving in, moving in, moving in. He finally went over the ridge and we rushed the ridge. And it worked perfect. We got up there. I knew he'd be right over the top. What I didn't know was there would be a cow standing there at 25 yards. And so the cow busted out. And when that happens in that brushy country, below us, it was just a mass of brush. I just knew she was going to run down the brush, take the bull, and it was game over. So I bugled like I was a bull coming right between the cow and the bull. And it worked to perfection. Yes. The next thing I know, I bugled and I'm creeping ahead and John's like, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. And we only had 25 yards of visibility, so I knew he was close. So I literally dropped down, had the arrow on, saw antlers coming, drew back, and I stood up. And the bull is broadside at that point, 20 yards, 26 yards, something like that. Broadside, and he's moving right into this, right behind a stump. And... I cow called hoping to stop him. It didn't stop him where I could get a shot right there. He moved behind the stump and stopped. I had no opening. And then he turned and started courting away going up the hill. And he came out from behind that stump. And I was watching the stump out of the corner of my eye on the left side the whole time. And he came out of that. And I have a perfect window. I cow call. Shoot. And it's one of those things that I think mentally you know what happened but you won't allow yourself to believe that actually happened. Exactly. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw the arrow kick and just sail up in the air. But at the same time, it was such a gimme shot. I thought there's no way I could miss. Yeah. So. That right there, the very tip of my blade sliced a 30 seconds of an inch into a little root wad that was sticking up on the right side that I didn't see or account for. Yep. Barely, barely, barely. Yeah. I, I just, you can't even describe those emotions. No. I seriously wanted to just cut my bowstring. I just wanted to give up, quit. All that effort to get there, my goal was to shoot a big herd bull we put in this effort, found him, and it was deflating. There's no doubt that, you know, it could have been one of the greatest days of elk hunting, and it turned into 
what seemed like one of the worst at the time. Yeah. So. But it's amazing how a couple hours helps you get over it. And I was. That was a long walk out of there. Yeah. Through that alder patch that we. <laughs> Purpose, we knew. <laughs> purposely went around because it was going to be too hard to go through. Yeah, went down through it. So. now good, good hunting partners pick you up, and you know by tomorrow I'll be ready to go again. So, but it does, you know, you set your goal on something, and you get an opportunity and miss it, and I can already feel there's a weakening in that hold out power yeah. to hold out for a mature bull a five point might be in trouble but we've got what, four days five days left still to hunt so certainly not giving up certainly not throwing in the towel but it was a setback today but yeah. but it's thanksgiving today so yes we okay. have a lot to be grateful for yes we do hope you're enjoying your family time and Enjoying your meals. Yeah. We'll be eating turkey because we don't have elk at this point at my house to be eating. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, it's, there's definitely a, a kick in the gut when you miss an elk, but at the same time, I'm still uh, riding high on that cloud of my daughter getting her first elk. And yeah. honestly, that, that made my season. Yeah. So. If I don't get an elk, then it'll sting. <laughs> but I'll be able to at least celebrate the fact that my daughter got her first elk and relive that over and over. Yeah. So, well, you've got a turkey to eat. You've got football to watch. You've uh, got awesome stuff to do today. So we're not going to keep you much longer. But giveaway today, we've... Uh, We've got package number two, which is the Gerber knife with the Elk 101 replaceable blade. We've got the Mountain Ops Ignite and the Yeti Rambler. And before we go, I want to give you a sneak peek. We're talking about broadheads and how that tiny little slice of the broadhead in that stump cost me an elk. But I don't know if I'm even supposed to be showing these yet. G5 sent me some new broadheads that are coming out next year. And... I love shot the striker sport ever and the striker hundred grain have been my go-to I can't even tell you how many years now but fly amazing strong sharper than a razor and leave a good blood trail these are the new ones coming out next year in 2020 the striker X four blade striker so these are pretty awesome I take them out of the package but I cut myself doing it here <laughs> just know these are awesome and then they also the montex which are the uh the solid one piece uh incredibly tough design broadhead they've got a brand new design and the montec m3 will be coming out next year as well so exciting stuff to look forward to uh they aren't ready now so i'd tell you to go buy them at the elk 101 store but you can't yet i just wanted to I give you a sneak I peek. I think I'm just going to take yeah, these four you, blades your hands off. to go with my four vein arrows. Yeah, four blade <laughs> rotted, four vein arrow. That's a that's a hold a bunch to an elk. So yeah. uh, it is Thanksgiving, so we do have an awesome Black Friday special coming for you. If you sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course starting right now, through we'll just leave it open all weekend. So through Sunday night, uh, use the code Black Friday. You're going to save thirty percent. So. On the online course? On the online course, we only offer that on Black Friday. Once you're, it's the only time you get a chance to save that much on it. So for the next couple days, you get to save 30% with the code Black Friday, all one word. And uh, code destination is still valid, but you only save $20. But you also do get a shirt if you use the code destination. So pick your amazing deal. Do you want to save $30 Choices. and get an awesome membership to the online course or do you want to save twenty dollars and get a t-shirt and the membership so i used to be indecisive now i'm not so sure <laughs> it was well timed uh, <laughs> i didn't even got to ask don if you had a dad joke for the day yet well played well yeah. played so 
Black Friday deal. Also head over to the Elk 101 store tomorrow for more awesome deals on elk hunting gear at elk101store.com. And happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night. Don't do that. I stared at the camera for a long time <laughs> smiling and then you said that. All right. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Ha, ha, ha.